Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another alternative to the starting ship. Just makes survival a little bit different, and it is very reminiscent of the old drop pods that we used to have that were those big blue ships, those blue and white ships that had everything we need to get started, compared to the more minimalistic one we have today. This thing right behind me is the SSI dinghy, and it is, like I said, an alternative to the starter ship. It's got all the basic stuff you need to get started from a survival kit, cargo containers, a solar panel, and atmospheric thrusters, just in case you need to move this from a hostile area. Pressing F10 and finding the spawn menu, the dinghy is 73 small blocks, and it uses quite a few of the DLC packs once the game decides to load up all the information. There we go. So it requires the decorative block number one, the Wasteland, Warfare 2, Heavy Industry, and decorative block number two DLC packs. We also see here another YouTuber called Stratus has done a showcase on this before, and their video is much more shorter, much more concise, so I'd highly recommend checking out that. But as for the rest of the Steam Workshop page, we've got a very clear list of what's going on with this vehicle, what it includes, and of course the PCU and mass. So we'll give this thing a thumbs up, Come all the way around towards the very front, we'll have a quick look around the outside, we'll have a quick look at the teeny tiny interior, then we'll fly around for a bit, and then I'll find a nearby mountainside to slam it into to see what kind of wreckage we can make. So at the very front here, this is what we get. Front and centre, we got ourselves our industrial cockpit to fly this thing around, with an interior turret right below it, which is our only form of defence on this starting ship, and it should be all you need to get started. Surrounding all of that, we've got some lovely blue rusted skinned blocks. We also see some good use of our railing blocks right above our cockpit, some additional decoration. If we were to move all the way around onto this side, this is our entrance side, where we've got ourselves a standard doorway to get in and out with another, another railing right here, which has been put to very good use, because that's how our ladder is being attached on. So we can easily get up to that without using our jetpack, and it almost touches the ground, so you will need to make sure you are quite flush on the ground when landing, make sure you don't damage it. As we move all the way along over to here, we can see our warfare battery behind a window block. We can see a cargo container with a half armoured panel. And there is our survival kit to respawn on. And of course to put stuff into to refine it up and get started building your base or another ship. Right above that, we've got a bunch of atmospheric thrusters to push us around in all directions. Then all the way over to here, we've got some fantastic use of our unfinished panels. And then we've got a bunch of beam blocks to come all the way around, covering up our bottom atmospheric thrusters, and our gyroscope all the way around at the very back here. So this is what we get at the very back, not too much else to talk about, it's just some more atmospheric thrusters, some more beam blocks, and some more unfinished armoured panels. Coming all the way around onto this side, this is what we get. Instead of having a doorway, we're going to have a bunch of windows to appear outside. We've got a spotlight and antenna, we can see the back side of our survival kit and our warfare batteries. And all the way around over to here and starting to move up, this is what we get. So at the front there we can clearly see our railing. We can then see some unfinished steel blocks for some more additional decoration. Looking down over to here, here is our solar panel. Then towards the back there, there is our atmospheric thruster. Coming all the way down and underneath this thing, excusing all the grass in the way, there is the bottom of our gyroscope so we can easily access that from the ground. There's the bottoms of our atmospheric thrusters. There is the bottoms of where our survival kit and cargo containers are sitting, as well as a magnetic plate to land this thing down on. Then going towards the very front there, there is our ladder, and there is our interior turret. So there we go with that. That is a very brief look around the outside of the SSI dinghy, and does look fantastic with how it's all been set up. A nice lot of detail has been put into this. I do love the addition of the unfinished steel blocks, and the rusted steel skin adds a lot of detail to the plain steel blocks that you wouldn't normally get if you were to use no skin whatsoever. So what we can do now is just grab hold of my character, come all the way over to here. We can then say, put stuff into this cargo container if we need to. We can heal ourselves up or even access the inventory of the survival kit. And we've got a nice little railing right here where we can stand onto it. So if the ship is moving or hovering in the air, we don't have to waste our jetpack while fiddling around with this. Then you've got to come all the way around. In fact, we'll come to the giant group at the back here just to show that you can just reach up to here and play around with this if you need to. And now we come all the way over to the ladder, where, like I said, no need to use our jetpack, no need to jump. We can just grab hold of this and move up. Just make sure you open the doorway, otherwise you're not going to be able to move up the ladder. And here we go. Just a singular door, so there's no airlock. And on the inside, this is what we get. 
It's got a little light to light up the darkness. We can clearly see through the other side thanks to this window. And behind us we've got a bed to sleep on. And there's our battery on the opposite side where we can clearly see how much charge it's got. Turning around and facing towards the front. This is our access panel for our industrial cockpit where we just click that. And in we get. Coming into first person view, this is what we get. It's got a very clear view all the way around this thing. No blocks are interfering with where we can see, apart from that little block on that corner, but that doesn't really matter. And yes, at the top there, we've got our time of day, we've got hydrogen power usage, our artificial horizon, and our weather. Then looking all the way down to here, we've got another artificial horizon with our speed. Bring up the HUD and coming to third person view, these are the controls that we get. So number four is going for that interior light all the way inside there where you can just about make out turning on and off. Number five is for manual control over our interior turret, just in case you need to do some precise shooting. And number six is to turn this on and off so you don't waste any kind of ammo. Number seven is for our atmospheric thrusters all the way around the chip to turn it on and off. And then number eight is for our batteries to auto or recharge. Number nine is for our antenna on and off. And that's that for the controls. So it's a very short and sweet control system which is all you need when starting out. So what we can do now is just realign the camera, turn on our atmospheric thrusters, press P to undo the parking brakes, and now we can lift this thing off the ground. So there we go, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world because we are limited by the thrusters in all directions, but we do have two underneath for good measure, so once your cargo container is all full of resources, you shouldn't sink down to the ground. Moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got some nice speed with our empty cargo containers, then come to a stop, we should be identical because we've got one thruster in both directions. Moving left and moving right should be the exact same. Then moving down, then moving up, we should be a little faster than everything else. And moving down, it's going to be based on gravity. We're doing the mass round, this is what we get. We are extremely heavy, but as you saw when I interfered with the gyroscopes, it was set very low. So if it's not up to your standard, if it is dragging too much, you can always come into here and turn it all the way up and that should give you a much more responsive control. But I do like how it was set by default, because it did make it a bit more chunkier with the controls. So back into here, we'll put it all the way down to there. And there we are. So as for that, there's not too much else to talk about. I suppose I could come into here, come into the control panel and see if we've got an ore detector. No, we do not. So we do have a very basic setup for you to build around and maybe to add more stuff on. Perhaps you can remove that spotlight on the top there and add an ore detector. That's entirely up to you. And you could even, if you really wanted to, just remove the thrusters and turn this into a little base. That would work very well. And you could expand it quite easily due to all the attach points you could use. But yes, as per usual, there's not too much else to talk about. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. I highly recommend you do because it is a fantastic alternative start to the standard drop pod. And yes, it would be a little bit cheating to spawn this in, but if you just do it at the very start, it really shouldn't matter. All the way over to here, this looks like a good candidate to slam ourselves into. Here we go, all the way forwards. And there we go, that was a very nice, very nice crash and... And it's all gone! That's not right, how did it all go away? We missed, we created a large hole over to here. But where did it all go? I've never seen anything like that. Oh well, yes, yeah, so thank you all for watching. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.